Apo, when are you gonna make a matchup chart? Tell me what matchups Greninja loses, Apo. Apo, what do I do Apo against Apo is Puff really minus 17, or is that just me? really not lose any matchups? Stop. No, seriously. This is one of the questions I get asked the most. Either when are you gonna make a matchup chart, or what do you think of the X matchup? Guys, I'm not sure if you've realized this, but I'm a labber. And as much as I know about the tiny little interactions that we can exploit with Greninja, that doesn't always translate to matchup knowledge. While something like down air canceling and no tumble combos can help us out a lot against Bowser, how does that apply to dealing with forward airs, flying breaths, and dash grabs? There's a lot more to matchups than even I understand. This is where competitors have a much stronger advantage than us labbers. While I can spend 40 minutes dropping knowledge on how to abuse a stage like Yoshi's story, I can't tell you nearly as much about the Terry matchup as JW can. And when it comes to making something like a matchup chart to show thousands of people, that's not a good look. Why is Duck Hunt plus one? Well, if you consider that the Remington 870 is one of the most common rifles used in duck hunting and it being a 12 gauge pump action shotgun, I think that says a lot about Greenwich's up in the matchup. Actually, yeah, you're right. I'm gonna put this in plus two. So instead of pretty much guessing which matchups we win or lose and having beef on Twitter about it, how about we, I don't know, fucking learn them? Does that sound like a good idea? Okay, cool, let's try this new video format. If there's one matchup I've seen Greninja players struggle with, it's Snake. And throughout my time in Ultimate, I've heard pretty much every opinion on the topic. I've heard people say that Greninja beats Snake, Snake is Greninja's worst matchup, Snake is even, whatever. Addressing the side of people who think that this matchup is losing though, I feel that a lot of this claim comes from matchup unfamiliarity. But at the same time, can you blind them? Snake is one of the most unique characters to fight against in Ultimate, and your playstyle versus him is gonna be way different compared to someone like Lucina. And not everyone has a time to put into grinding out this matchup and learning how to play around every little interaction. Anyways, I've spent the past six months living in the Snake Discord, grinding friendlies, recording footage, clipping examples, asking questions, theory crafting, labbing interactions, playing top Snake players, analyzing VODs, watching Snake tutorials, taking notes from anti-Snake guides, digging up old Vinia Twitch VODs, and working on this video just to pass all my knowledge to all of you. And seeing how the script for Just Neutral is longer than that of the entire video I made on Yoshi's story? Oh boy, strap yourselves in. So without further ado, I present to you all how to Fight Snake, the movie. So let's kick this off with the most important move of snakes that you'll want to play around. No, stop, I used that joke already. So, from what I've seen of Greninja players, they either don't respect grenades at all, or they respect them way too much. And this mainly comes from them not knowing exactly what causes grenades to go off. So let's cover that really quickly. Starting on the frame that Snake posed a grenade, it'll take two and a half seconds for it to detonate. A lot of you guys might dismiss this as common knowledge, but you don't know how many times I've seen people still get hit by these things. Having a mental timer of how long it takes your grenades to go off is arguably the most important part of this matchup. Because until these things explode, you have to realize, they're they're not a threat at all. If Snake throws an uncooked grenade at you, you take, what, like, two damage? And on top of that, there's no hit stun at all on these things. This pretty much means that Snake is putting himself into end live while you're free to choose any option whatsoever. That sounds like a pretty free approach to me. Okay, but what if Snake throws the grenade? Uh, yeah. Unless you're staying at pretty much point blank range, Greninja gets a low profile of these things for free. And even if the item does hit you, that's not a threat. Remember, this only does two damage and doesn't cause you to flinch at all. And on top of that, the grenade actually bounces off of you, meaning that you're free to use any grounded attack without being at the risk of it detonating. Okay, so what about attacks? I feel like I can't press the A button in this matchup at all without exploding. While yes, attacks do cause grenades to detonate, the only two moves I can see realistically setting them off are dash attack and nair. And even then, if if you're not landing directly above the grenade, Nair is kind of pushing it. All this means for Greninja is that you have to play neutral, and dash attack is not neutral. You can actually use this property of attacks causing grenades to detonate against Snake. For example, an uncharged water shuriken will go right over the grenade and hit Snake. But if you see him go anywhere near this thing, just make it a slight charge and blow it up in his face. Let's break this down actually, because while it might not seem like much, this interaction is huge. What's crazy about these slight charge shurikens is that you only need to spend an extra three frames charging it for it to hit the grenade. That's nothing. This means that you can pretty much instantly decide between tossing a shuriken over a grenade 
or tossing a shuriken to hit the grenade. And uh, this shit combos. Hard. If you manage to blow up Snake with a grenade, you can get a free Nair, Up Smash, Drag Down, Up Air, Forward Air, or even Footstool for so much reward. Not to mention, you can combine this with Greninja's run speed to still confirm from across the stage. Guys, start looking for these situations, because from just one projectile, this is huge. And also, if Snake pulls a grenade on a platform, you can use Pump to kind of do the same thing, just without the combos. Greninja has a ton of ways to play around these things, and knowing exactly when they're gonna detonate keeps you from taking unnecessary damage. On top of that, let me tell you guys the secret about grenade toss and grenade throw. Because of the initial throw hitbox of the move, any attacks that hit grenade will not cause it to detonate. What this means is that you're free to toss out any attack without the risk of the grenade going off unless it does so after the two and a half second timer. And if you want to use this against Snake, go ahead. Backer is incredibly good for this since you can extend the lingering hitbox to last her even longer to beat out Snake's approach options. The only thing that I will say about this is that if the grenade does collide with something like your hurtbox, shield, or another attack, attacking it will now cause it to explode. So keep that in mind. All right, we've gone on about uncooked grenades. Let's talk about cooked ones. Snakes tend to struggle against characters that have an immediate answer to these things. Some examples are Mega Man with pellets, Ness with magnet, and Inkling with splatter shot. Greninja's answer to grenade is Substitute, and oh man, this can do so much for him in the matchup. Since Substitute automatically locks onto an opponent within a range of four and a half training mode blocks, you essentially get a free hit by just countering one of these things. And remember how Substitute doesn't go with knockback? Even one of these tiny hitboxes from Snake just pulling a grenade. If he's above 100, that's essentially a free stop. And if you want that actual percent that this is guaranteed to kill Snake at, links in the description. Okay, so this sounds great at high percents, but what about at low to mid percents? This option is still pretty damn good. At low percents, a downward substitute can force a tech chase, essentially making it back air but with more range and invincibility frames. And as we know from here, you can cover all Snake's options with a dash attack. At mid percents, this move gets even better. Snake's gameplay revolves around a lot of setups. Let me go ahead and set up an up smash, drop a grenade, detonate C4, and reset. Not sure if you noticed, but each one of these moves contains a hitbox. So if you want to take all of Snake's hard work away from him, screw it, you're over here now. And whenever you do activate counter, remember, this is a lingering hitbox with iframes. So if you see any grenades on the ground, you're free to drag Snake through them and set them off for pretty much 40% from one interaction. That's not to mention the angle that Substitute sends at. If you choose to die down, you'll be putting Snake at a pretty awkward angle to recover at. And from there, free edge guard. What I will say though, is that you want to be careful with how you go about angling this move depending on the situation. If Snake's outside of counter range, don't try to aim towards him across the stage and get up tilted. And if he gets a setup going, remember that bouncing off of the ground causes you to immediately lose your iframes. Just be careful with it, and you've got a great tool in the matchup. But as good of an option as counter is, you don't always have to use it. If Snake's tossing cooked grenades at you, for example, remember, you will profile these things for free. And if the grenade isn't physically bouncing off of you, that's more time that it's spending in the air. You'd be surprised by how much of a difference 5 frames in the air can change the positioning of this move, especially when you realize how much Snake players love to smash item throw these things. What this means is that Snake has to essentially guess where you'll be in order to connect a grenade. But if he misses, that's that's 24 frames before he can act. And from here, go ahead and get that approach. Compare that to where I see so many Greninja players going wrong in the matchup. I'm not sure why, but even some of the best Greninja players love to shield grenades, and I have so many problems with this. First of all, as I'm sure you guys know, I'm not a big fan of shielding with Greninja. On top of Greninja's out of shield options being pretty bad, you're taking one of your biggest strengths and pretty much throwing it in the garbage. So tell me guys, what's the difference between this Greninja and this one? That's right, this one's dead. Movement is such a key part to a character, and by holding the shoulder button on your controller, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're taking all of your momentum and suddenly equating it to zero. I'm gonna cover this more in depth in a minute here, but that's a huge problem, especially when you consider how much better Greninja's mobility is compared to Snake's. All that guessing Snake had to do to get a hit on you, you just made his life way easier for him. And this is the thing that I really don't like. Remember how I said that you can low profile grenades for free? Not anymore. Because you're in shield, grenades now have a surface to bounce off of. It might not seem like it, but dude, sippies dits. First of all, look at where this grenade is ending up. In front of you, floating slowly, and controlling this entire area. You're taking the 5 frame window for the explosion to hit you and pretty much turning it into the entire fuse time of the grenade. Want to make that even worse? You just got hit by an attack on your shield. This means that now you have to spend 11 frames of shield drop before you can even dash away. Even if you jump, you're still putting yourself at the risk of exploding. So guys, I really want to drive this point home. This goes for Greninja in general, but it goes especially for Greninja in this matchup. Don't 
fucking shield. Not every character gets the low profile snakes grenades the way you do. When one of your strongest counterplays to grenade includes just playing your character the way you normally should, please do that. Greenish is in the shield character and he has some of the best mobility in the game for a reason. Start to recognize this interaction because it's going to be happening a lot in your games. Okay, there you go. Grenades in neutral. Trust me, we're going to come back to these things like 10 different times in this video, but let's move away from them for now. So on to Snake's shield. By itself, this thing isn't all that much of a threat. Apart from down air, Snake has some pretty underwhelming out of shield options. I mean, just look at this frame data. Back air is frame 10, up smash is frame 11, and grab is frame 12. Not to mention, back gets low profiled and up smash doesn't work on DIN. What this means is that as long as you're not using point blank laggy attacks on Snake's shield, you're safe. And what that boils down to is this. Do not dash attack on shield. If you don't hit a shield with dash attack, you're not going to be put in attack chase, you're not going to get down throw up tilted, and you're not going to get up smash C forward. All of your other options like space down tilt, forward tilt, jab, fair, nair, and grab, they're all safe. So stop being a typical Elite Smash Greninja player and just press something else, please. All right, so with that out of the way, how do we deal with down air? Everything I said earlier applies here as well. This move is fast, but it has next to no range. I mean, look at this. Um, actually, Apo, you forgot to account for Snake's three frames of air drift before the move comes out. Oh yeah, my bad. Let me fix that. Just kidding. That doesn't make a fucking difference. Look at how little range drifting as a Snake's down air. I guess having the worst air excel in the game isn't doing Snake any favors here. Again, this means that if you're not point blank in Snake's face when hitting his shield, you're totally fine. The only move that might get you hit by this is Nair, but even then there's an easy fix. If you cross up Snake's shield with Nair, he straight up doesn't have an answer to this. And if he commits to the down air out of shield, he's forced to spend an entire second in the air before he can act again. This is where you get your dash attack in. Easy as that. Something you want to remember though is to not jump after the Nair. Remember that back air we said that we could low profile earlier? Jumping basically takes that away and gives Snake his one out of shield option to be you. Just stay grounded and wait for your punish and everything will be fine. And if that downer does happen to connect on you, don't panic and press shield or anything. The hitbox is super inconsistent, so a lot of the time you're able to just hit Snake for doing it anyway. And if you want to make it even more inconsistent, try to SEI behind Snake. And from here, he's forced to hit the ground giving you a punish. All right, this is the tricky part. How do we deal with shield when there are grenades there? One of the most common ways for snake players to pull a grenade is to cancel the toss animation by instantly going into shield. And whenever they do this, grenades on the floor, under their feet, and they're in shield. If the grenade's on the ground, you'll want to pressure snake shield in a way that doesn't set it off. Again, this means no dash attack, which you shouldn't be using, and no nair. Nair is the big one. If you try to nair snake shield with a grenade there, you're very likely to set it off and give snake a window to follow up. If snake didn't just pull the nade though, you can aim to hit nair on the top Top of his shield without setting it off. This is super good since remember, Snake doesn't have an answer to cross up Nair. But also remember that you have so many other options to pressure Snake's shield with. You have forward air, back air, F tilt, down tilt, jab, and grab. Let's talk about that last one. If you grab Snake out of shield while a grenade is on the ground, do not pummel. Pummeling actually contains a small hitbox and this will detonate the grenade sending both you and Snake into tumble. Instead, if you are going to grab Snake, try to throw him immediately. This will make it so that if the grenade does go off, you're inside of throw armor and you won't get hit. The only thing about this is that you'll want to time the throw to line up with a grenade's explosion. If you mistime it and you're outside of the animation, yeah, you're gonna blow up. Oh no, that sucks. Only if there was a way to combine the pummel hitbox with the throw armor to safely throw a snake every time. <clears throat> Forward throw. This is Greninja's only throw with the hitbox on it, meaning you're able to safely throw a snake while detonating the grenade and keeping your throw armor. On top of that, the detonation from the grenade actually doubles your damage from F throw for free. And if that's not enough for you, check this out. When Snake hits 136, there's enough hit stun to where a grenade visit forward throw will now send Snake above Greninja. And from here, forward throw up air is a kill confirm. Grabs can do a ton for Greninja in this matchup, so don't forget that you have one. Okay, so how does this all change if Snake's holding a grenade? Another one of the most common ways for Snake to pull one of these things is by doing what's called a Z nade. Pretty much what it boils down to is Snake pulling the grenade, going into shield, jumping out of shield, and Z catching the grenade as an item. While punishing the Z nade itself is super tricky, what you can punish is what Snake does after the Z nade. And if he shields, let's talk about it. Depending on how long ago Snake pulled the grenade, you can get away with so much if Snake has it as an item in his hand. Having a grenade in hand means that Snake no longer has access to down air, up smash, or grab out of shield. Each one of these inputs gets eaten by an item throw, meaning that you're free to pressure his shield all day long. Hell, you can even pressure his shield with forward smash if you really want to. And on top of that, since grenades being held as an item, you don't have to worry about blowing yourself up with narrow dash attack anymore. As long as grenade doesn't hit that two and a half second timer, you're totally safe. Speaking of which,
damage. That thing is set, meaning that even if you're in the middle of Shield Sun, Grenade will still go off after two and a half seconds and Snake can convert off of it. But because the grenade is physically attached to Snake's body, this can open up so much for Greninja. So as I'm sure we know by now, Grab beats Shield. And because Snake doesn't have access to half of his kit here, this makes Tomahawk Grab super strong against him. If you're able to catch Snake holding a grenade here, Holy crap, be ready to convert. Since the grenade is glued to Snake's hand, we don't care nearly as much about timing the throw so that we have invincibility as the grenade goes off. If you throw Snake and the grenade explodes after the throwing animation, he's over here now. And look at that, we got even more damage off of it. Lining up these throws with the grenade explosion is actually incredibly easy to do. Because when you look at how long the actual throw takes, call me Kazuya because we're pretty much putting Snake into a one second cutscene where he can't do anything. That's 40% of the fuse timer right there. Not to mention, you can wait in between the actual grab and the throw. So even if he just pulled a grenade, all you need to do is have a feeling for the timing and you'll get this one two action going easy. Okay, so we threw him and the grenade exploded in midair. Do we call it quits here? Um, no. If Snake's able to hit me with this shit, it's time to hit him with some shit of our own. So starting off with the easiest conversion from this. Normally, Greninja's up throw is pretty damn weak and won't kill Snake until 196 without rage. However, if you catch him holding a grenade, you can send him up into the top blast zone and basically turn into Mewtwo. This can kill a whole 70% earlier than a normal up throw, and for how low risk it is, that's massive. If Snake's above 120, enjoy your free stock. A confirm that you can get away with until Mewtwo% percent is a 4 throw, nade explosion, forward air. This works for a pretty wide window, and you'll guarantee 40% from one grab every time. And if Snake happens to be near the ledge, this is also a kill confirm. And just to add some more to it, there's also a sweet spot where you can confirm a 4 throw grenade shadow sneak. So if you see the situation in the corner, here's your chance to put Snake into your combo video. And depending on which blast zone is closer to you, this shit also works from back throw. What I will say about back throw though, is that it's Greninja's most damaging throw, meaning that it gives Snake the highest chance of dropping the grenade. Show your eyes if you're afraid of nerd shit, but if we plug the number into this formula, there's a 16.14% chance that Snake will drop the grenade if he's holding it after a back throw. Wait a minute, that sounds a bit familiar. Fuck it, we're calling this tech Fire Blast. Recognize that this can throw off your combos. <laughs> throw off. But considering the mileage that Greninja gets off of one combo and the fact that a raw grenade doesn't come anywhere close to killing you until 200%, that's a fair trade-off a lot of the time. And also, back throw is arguably more combo friendly. If we compare these two DIs away from Greninja, we'll see that after a fourth throw snake goes further off stage, but after a back throw, he barely goes anywhere. This is because the grenade from fourth throw sends snake away from Greninja and the grenade from back throw sends snake towards Greninja. So while you can still get fourth throw nade combos, maybe back throw is the way to go, I I genuinely don't know the answer to this because I'm kind of finding this out as I'm writing the script. You still have to consider the drop chance though, so your call guys, clip snake however you see fit. At percents a bit higher, you can start going for some confirms off of down throw. Down throw happens to set up super nicely for you to connect a shadow sneak, so be on the lookout for it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything that I've got to say about hell grenade combos. Don't be afraid to get creative guys and have fun styling. Another option that I personally use to pressure snakes with the cook grenade shield is to jump towards them with counter. Don't ask me why, but a lot of snake players love to drop shield here giving you a free hit. And even if they don't drop shield, check this out. For some reason, the upwards angle of substitute is actually coded to do additional damage to shields. And because this angle actually spawns Greninja inside of the opponent's character model, this will always hit shield. Some of you might see where I'm going with this. Snake shield is constantly taking damage from grenades, meaning that it's pretty much always going to be around the mid health level. If you're aware of this and you substitute, you get some really good options. The fact that the upwards angle of counter spawns you inside of snake lets you decide. Do I want to poke his shield for a kill at 100, or do I want to break it at 50? That's huge! You're able to take one of Snake's biggest tools and use it against them pretty much for free. Want to make that even better? I talked about this briefly in part 5 of the guide, but I have to address it here as well. If you manage to grab a grenade and counter just as it's about to go off, Greninja's counter will take forever to come out. Most Snake players go into shield as soon as they see this, but so many properties come into play and make this interaction ridiculous. Alright, prepare yourselves for the Appalachian Goes Full Nerd segment. When I was making part 5 of the guide, I had no idea what caused this interaction to happen, but we actually figured it out in 2021. Whenever you grab an item, you'll change that item's priority to yourself. Take Banana for example. If Diddy picks it up and throws it on the ground, he doesn't get tripped by it, but I do. But if I were to pick up the banana, the opposite happens. I don't get tripped by it, but Diddy does. That's because the game takes the priority of the item and writes it to me. I mean, it'd be pretty dumb if you could hit yourself with your own item, right? Well, explosives kind of do that. While you can't hit yourself with your own item toss, you are able to hit yourself with your own explosion. This is where it gets weird. Normally, Greninja 
Greninja's counter slow mos and locks onto the person it counters. Well, because the item's priority changed to Greninja, Greninja is countering himself. This is what makes the startup of counter take so long. And if the snake player goes into shield, that's an entire second and a half of snake holding shield outside of slow mo, draining its health. If you combine this with the initial explosion of a grenade on snake's shield, this can force a shield break after just one forward air. That's huge. So if you want shield breaks or shield pokes on command, free. Also, it's not uncommon for the snake player to drop shield because of the tension from this interaction. And after that happens, you can trip them up pretty well for a free hit. The only thing to note is that this doesn't actually lock onto your opponent because remember, Greninja is countering himself. So in this situation, you want to jump into the opponent's shield while holding the grenade and everything will check out. All right, that should cover the bulk of grenades for now. Hopefully that wasn't too much info because we've still got the rest of neutral to cover. Next up, we've got up smash. Okay, and now we have Nikita. No, I'm just kidding. Let's talk about this move. So real talk, this move isn't a problem for Greninja if you know how to play around it. Snake players love to toss out up smash when going for setups since it covers a ton of space around them. If you try to do an aerial, you'll get hit. If you try to grab him, you'll get hit. And if you try to pressure his shield, you'll get hit. This thing is decently spammable for Snake, and if it connects at all, there's a good chance that you'll want to pull up my April Fool's video to escape the start KO animation. As scary as this option might sound, Greninja has incredibly easy counterplay to it. Yeah, I just said it. Counter play. Not sure if you guys have heard of this thing called gravity, but if Snake uses up smash, the projectile from this move travels in an arc, meaning that it has to hit the ground. And considering that it takes an entire second to do so, that's way more than enough time to react, run in, and get a substitute out. You really want to get into the mindset of doing this, because if you see Snake use this move at all, that's pretty much a free kill. So now let's talk about Nikita. This move doesn't see nearly as much usage from Snake in neutral as it does in advantage, but it's still an option to consider. Snake's most likely to be using this when he's got a bit of a setup going and he just wants to toss out a quick hitbox to cover some space. Well, quick probably isn't the best word to use. This thing comes out on frame 41 and has a pretty significant amount of end lag, but it's as close as Snake gets to having an immediate projectile, so hey. In neutral, Snake's usually going to cancel out of this move right after it travels this tiny bit of range, and after that, he's stuck in a decent amount of end lag. The way to beat this option is to jump over Snake with Nair. Once you see Snake come into the 41 frames of startup, you should pretty much be ready to short hop or full hop over him with the aerial. Snake doesn't have the best control of Nikita when it's in the air, so you shouldn't have to worry about him doing a 360 loop-de-loop -loop no scope to anti-air you. By the way, notice how I said that Nair beats this option, not forwarder and not back air. If you try to connect one of these two moves, you'll be putting yourself right in the path of Nikita and pretty much give Snake a free hit. If you really do want to connect one of these, you'll want to jump over Snake first and hit him from his back. This mainly works with back air since I don't think anyone's going to be doing raw forward air in neutral. So if you want to get some drag down back air combos going, that's how. Alright, that should do it for the bulk of Snake's setup moves. So now that we've taken Snake's grenade, shield, up smash, and Nikita out of the equation, what options does he have left? and how should we be looking for interactions? If we look at Snake's movement attributes, oh man, these things are really, really bad compared to Greninja's. To give you an idea of how bad Snake's movement stats are, he comes in 73 places behind Greninja for walk speed, 52 for run speed, 51 for air speed, and fucking 84 for jump height. The only movement attribute that Snake comes close to Greninja in is fall speed, but that doesn't matter nearly as much as all these other stats. What this means is that if you're moving properly, Snake straight up cannot catch you. So guess what? We're going to be doing in this matchup. Unless Snake has a setup going that you can counter, let him come to you. Water Shuriken is an incredibly good tool for this. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at how long it takes for Snake to run across PS2. His run speed being this Garbaccio means that if he wants to get all up close and personal with you, it's going to take him a while to do so. And if you add shurikens on top of that, his job just got way harder. Now he has to take breaks in between his dashes to avoid shurikens, or else he's going to be taking the same damage as dash attack backer from across the stage. Oh yeah, did I mention that Water Shuriken covers three quarters of the stage? No? What about the fact that it's unreactable on release? If Snake sees you charging a shuriken, he knows that you're going to have to commit to it. But what he doesn't know is exactly when you're going to do so. So if he tries to do something like run up flicker shield, you can choose to charge the shuriken for even longer and release it so that it connects when Snake is in his 11 frames of shield drop. And if he chooses a dash right after, that's another 10 frame window where he can't shield again. In that one third of a second interaction, charging shuriken essentially triples the amount of damage that you're able to get off of it. So mixing up your shuriken timings can go a 
very long way in getting you chip damage. And if Snake shows it anyways, who cares? Snake has to do this across the stage to try and catch you. That's not scary at all. Even if Snake does manage to reach you, you're Greninja. Just get out of there and make him have to work for his approach all over again. Since Snake generally doesn't want to play Tekken, he might start to look for short hop approaches over Shuriken. But remember, Snake has the fourth worst jump height in the game. If you short hop and charge your Shuriken in midair, you're able to control this airspace super well. Any attempt that Snake does at a short hop approach now gets interrupted by this aerial water shuriken that does even more damage. And even if Snake doesn't jump, he's tall enough to the point that this still hits him. Not to mention the fact that being in the air now gives you access to your top 10 air speed, shuriken drift, and beer reverse options to make catching you even harder. This move puts in so much work for Greninja in the matchup, and it's no wonder that players like Tark literally just run the clock getting damage off of it. Okay, but Snake's a zoner, isn't he? Doesn't that mean that he can just camp us back and win the projectile war? The term zoner should be used lightly for Snake. Well, yes, he does have options to play the long range, it takes a lot of setup for him to do so. Remember, Grenade has a two and a half second timer. That's two and a half seconds for you to pressure him with shurikens, get chip damage, and just abuse your movement. On top of that, we covered this already, but Snake has to guess where you're gonna be to connect the grenade. And if he misses, that's another two and a half seconds of setup before he's able to play the guessing game again. Moving properly does so much for Greninja at a quarter of the effort of what it takes Snake to do to get one interaction. Let's tackle uncooked nades one more time. When you're camping Snake back with shurikens and he's missing nade tosses, he's gonna start to feel a bit frustrated. What he might try to do is toss an uncooked grenade at you straight out of the pulling animation. And while we can hold on to the nade to cook it for a bit here, this leaves him super wide open to water shuriken since he has to either take the shuriken causing him to drop the grenade or shield the shuriken and abandon the setup completely. This means that if you see a slow moving grenade bouncing towards you, you know that Snake immediately tossed it and now you can say to yourself, you know what? Let me not go there in two and a half seconds. Guys, two and a half seconds in Smash is a pretty significant amount of time. But also, Snake tossing a nade towards you just spent an entire second of its fuse timer. Imagine if Snake was able to pull a cook nade instantly with no setup. Well, that's pretty much what he just did for us. You now have a cook nade in front of you that you're completely able to use against Snake. And if you've ever wanted to get an appreciation for how you're able to low profile a nade toss, Oh boy, throw a grenade at Snake. While Snake has to play the guessing game against you, you don't have to play the guessing game against Snake. Whatever range he's at, this grenade will always hit him. Not to mention that if Snake pulls another grenade, yours got pulled first, meaning that you can toss this grenade to blow up the other grenade and potentially even double your damage off of it. Okay, so we toss a grenade and hit Snake. What can we get off of it? I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but Gren plus Nade equals Grenade. It's like our character was born for this. The amount that Greninja is able to get off of this thing is actually broken. First of all, recognize that you're a completely different character than Snake, with your own air speed, walk speed, and fall speed. And when it comes to run speed, dude, you can just toss this grenade at Snake, end up across the stage in half a second, and get an approach just as it's about to go off. But wait, why would you do that? Aren't you just gonna blow yourself up from the grenade? No, the only thing that's about to be blown is your mind. Whenever we pull up the data surrounding Grenade, we'll see that the explosion actually has two hitboxes. A frame one hitbox and a frame two hitbox. And if we look at the frame one hitbox, this thing is incredibly small compared to the frame two. Why does that matter? Well, the player that has priority of the grenade is completely immune to the frame two hitbox. Whenever you toss a grenade at Snake, it makes contact with his character model, bounces, and changes from being at eye level to being above you in the air. And just like how we're able to low profile the grenade item throw, we're now able to low profile the grenade explosion. This gives you so much pressure against Snake. Even if he shields a grenade throw, you can run up and grab him out of shield for some insane nade interrupted grab release combos. And if you manage to connect the grenade itself, geez, get ready to convert. Grenade is an incredibly good combo starter, and the amount of hits that it gives you lets you pretty much combo into imagination. You can think of it as Greninja's Nair, but as an item that you're able to throw from across the stage. I'm not going to cover everything you're able to get off of it, but here are just a few ideas to get you going. Ela é amiga da minha mulher. Ela é amiga da minha 
But yeah, that's pretty much the bulk of playing long range in this matchup. Don't be afraid to play lame, guys. Super doable and super recommended. If you're the one who's constantly approaching Snake, you'll have to deal with a ton of his whiff punishing tools, and they're pretty damn strong. Just to give you an idea, he's got dash back, dash attack, down tilt, and grab to beat out your grounded approaches, up tilt to anti air, and crawl to pretty much make forward air and back air useless. So yeah, chilling back here with water shurikens can go a very long way in this matchup. So if Snake's the one approaching you, what options should you look out for? The four main ones that you want to consider are dash attack, grab, down tilt, and back air. Let's tackle these one at a time. Starting with dash attack, you'll be seeing this move at pretty much any percent. It comes out at frame 5, has solid range, and even has intangibility on it. That's a lot, so how do we beat it? The best way to go about beating dash attack is to bait it out. After Snake uses this move, there's a decent window before he's able to act out of it. So if you bait Snake into using it by standing at this range, dash back dash attack is a pretty solid way to hit him for it. And if you don't want to dash back, you can often just jump over the move and land with Nair. Again, that's Nair. Neutral air, not forward air. Trying to space and time a forward air against Snake's dash attack often leaves you in a position to get hit. As for back air, I found that it can actually go through Snake's intangibility on his arms to beat out the move, but you're still running the risk of trading. So it is an option, but you're probably better off using Nair. Also, you can continue to toss out Water Shurikens in neutral against this. If you toss out a Water Shuriken against Snake's dash attack and he clanks with it, he'll enter a state called Rebound. This is the whole clank animation where both characters freeze for a bit. But because Water Shuriken is a projectile, Snake's in Rebound when you're not. This gives you a guaranteed dash attack from just an uncharged Water Shuriken. And if you charge it more, I'm not kidding when I say that you can get a guaranteed forward smash off of this. So if for some reason you thought Water Shuriken was wasn't a good enough projectile already, it just got way better. So some of you frame data heads might be looking at Snake's dash attack and notice that it's minus 26 on shield. This means that you can hit him out of shield for it, right? Well, yes, this technically is an option, it's not necessarily a good one. Remember how I said that Snake's dash attack is unreactable? This means that you have to guess when the move's coming and preemptively go into shield. And if he sees you do this, he's gonna get a free grab. Try not to fall into the habit of shielding this move because Snake's grab can do a ton for him. So let's talk about it. Snake's grab game is really strong and he's able to get a ton of mileage if he connects one on you. If he catches you slacking, he now has access to up throw up tilt, down throw tech chases, and back throw c4. Despite this, dealing with snake's grab isn't all that different compared to other characters. I mean, it's not like he has great inches pivot grab range or anything. Just like most other characters in the game, he has to be pretty close to connect one of these. So just by using good movement, you're making him have to guess where you'll be in order to land a grab. That's not to mention all the other ways you have to deal with option. Water shurikens, forward air spacing, lingering back air, dash attack with punish, and even pivot grab can all be good options. Just make sure that you're not shielding in place and you'll make landing the grab all the much harder for Snake. Because, yeah, Snake's movement is kinda ass. As for down tilt, this move is a bit trickier to deal with. Unlike dash attack and grab, Snake's down tilt has a pretty good amount of range on it and he doesn't have to be point blank for it to connect. Like, what the fuck is this hitbox? There's no foot there. If that wasn't enough, it also low profiles frame 1, can set up to catch landings, and comes out frame 6, meaning that it's unreactable. If you see it coming though, you can beat it by jumping over it with Nair. Down tilt doesn't cover Snake's head at all, and Nair's own disjointed hitbox means that low profiling isn't an issue. You can also whiff punish this move with dash attack, but you'll want to be careful when doing this. Snake's down tilt has very low end light compared to his other moves, and you'll often be able to get shield up just before dash attack connects. And from here, you just perform a cardinal sin and dash attack on shield. Now die. If you do read the shield, you can get a grab, but this also opens up the possibility of you getting hit by a spot dodge up tilt. If you read this, you can go for a hard punish, but that's pretty risky considering that it's snake's up tilt that you're playing around. If you want a safe option to cover both shield and spot dodge, you can try to do a run up space down tilt or forward tilt to pressure shield and avoid the up tilt after a spot dodge. Okay, I know I just covered like 10 different scenarios in one move, but yeah, this thing is a bit tricky to work around. Let's turn away from that though and talk about an easier approach option to deal with. Back air. There's not too much to say about this move, apart from the fact that it's Snake's most non-committal anti-air. If Snake reads a jump from you, this is the move he's going to be looking for, and he'll mainly be doing it from a full hop since it allows him to auto-cancel it. So like any other anti-airing option, if you see it coming, just don't jump. Since Snake has to do this from a full hop without fast falling to auto-cancel it, there's more than enough time for you to react and whiff punish with a dash attack, up tilt, pivot grab, or any 
other grounded option. Also, remember that Snake's air acceleration is the worst in the game, meaning that if he jumps in one direction, he literally cannot stop moving in that direction. You're free to use this and figure out the trajectory of his jump so that you hit him as soon as he lands. Despite this, there is a small window where Snake's free to jump out of a full hop back air before touching the ground. But considering how valuable Snake's double jump is, the fact that it can't be done unless from a frame perfect full hop, and Snake players not even knowing about this, it's really not too much to worry about. If Snake does come into the jump, just remember that he's forced to go in that direction and try to hit him for it. I already mentioned this, but if you want to try to approach Snake, you're going to have to deal with his dash back with punishes, out of shield options, crouch, and up tilt anti-air. Again, not approaching isn't a bad idea, but let's entertain that you do want to approach. How do we beat each one of these options? The first thing that you'll want to do is scout for which option the Snake player likes to do. You can do this in a number of ways, like dash dancing, double jumping away, or even just losing an interaction and saving the data. Having this download helps you so much with counterplay, because if you know what the dude's going to do, just act around it. So let's say that you scout Snake's option and he likes to dash back. This is probably the most common option that you'll see, since Snake has plenty of ways to hit you from here. As I'm sure us with Punish Masters know, taking a step back can be super strong against approaches. This is a huge part of Greenwich's game plan, since it opens up moves that aren't normally able to be punished out of shield. And if you give Snake the same opportunity, all of your safe aerials and tilts suddenly become punishable. If he dash attacks you, he gets a free setup. If he down tilts you, he can convert for a kill. And if he grabs you, well, you just got grabbed by Snake. The way you get around this is by either overshooting or faking an approach. For overshooting, all you have to do is consider that Snake's not going to be here when you come in with an attack. So if you aim your move to hit back here instead, you're fine. The only thing is that this does require a bit of a read and commitment from your part. If you guess that Snake's going to be back here but all he does is stay in place, yeah, you're going to be that guy in bracket. Instead, faking an approach can be a really solid option. Just the presence of Great Ninja's dash attack is enough to scare a lot of players on its own. If you run in and Snake dashes back, just dash back too. If he jumps the gun and tosses out something like a dash attack, you'll be outside of the moves range for a punish. And if you combine this with tomahawks, double jumps, and stalling, you're going to be throwing off Snake's neutral really hard. On to Snake's cr- I mean crouch. This option is most likely to come out when you're at a high percent since a whiffed aerial pretty much equals a free out for Snake. So here's my advice. Don't use forward air or back air. It's that simple. Even if you follow my advice and practice forward airing a crouch in Kirby and training mode religiously, Snake's crouch will still find a way to screw you over. Him being this low to the ground means that a lot of the time you're going to be missing your aerials. And once you land, you're right there in Snake's face met by up tilt. The one arrow that doesn't get affected by this is Nair. Remember how I said that Nair doesn't care about low profiling? The same thing applies here. So as long as you're in this area of Snake, you're going to get this move to connect. But Apo, didn't you say that Nair doesn't connect on grenades because the corners of the circle are higher up than the center? Yeah, but that doesn't apply here. As much as Snake loves to blow himself up, he's not a grenade. And if he crouches, he actually moves his hurtbox towards you. This means that if you aim for Snake even before he starts to crouch, you're going to hit him every time. On top of that, you can combine this with Tomahawk down tilt pretty well. When Snake goes into crawl, remember, his character model is technically still over here. So if he chooses to up tilt, he's performing the move from back here. What that means is that you're able to Tomahawk land with down tilt and hit Snake's crouch without being in the range of his up tilt. So if you want a free down tilt up smash, here you go. Let's talk about Snake's up tilt a bit more. This thing is fast, has a huge hitbox, is decently spammable, and kills pretty early. How early? Percents below. As BS as it might seem, you pretty much have to give Snake this kill. And what that boils down to is don't put yourself above him. There are so many situations situations where Snake will just wait for you to mess up and connect an up tilt. So let me run down the list of things not to do. Do not jump into Snake, do not run off a platform over Snake, do not land on top of Snake, and do not try to challenge this crouch with forward air or back air. Got it? Okay, sweet. If you do all that, you shouldn't have to worry about being hit by this move and losing your stock at 90. The final move to talk about in neutral, C4. When Snake first plants this, it glows red for a tiny bit, telling you exactly where it is on the stage. And whenever you see that, do your best to remember exactly where it is and not go there. If you don't remember where on the stage C4 is planted and try looking for it, good luck. I don't think you're gonna find the four black pixels on PS2 in the 26.6 seconds before it goes off on its own. This move in itself is one of the reasons that I really recommend playing this matchup with audio if possible. We're going to talk about this a lot more in the disadvantage section whenever we go over stickies, but C4 has some pretty specific sounds that can help you to play around it. If you don't react to the actual C4 drop animation in scenarios like when Snake's in the air, this latch sound effect gives you another cue to the fact that C4 is in play.
One of the most common spots that Snake likes to put C4 in is on top of platforms. And believe it or not, this can still hit below them. But Greninja doesn't care about that at all. Going back to circle theory, if Greninja dashes under a platform that's at all higher than the ones on PS2, he's able to low profile C4's explosion completely. On PS2, this can still connect on Gren, but only if he's right under it as it goes off. And considering that it takes Snake 25 frames to dead C4, he has to be immaculate with his timing to hit you for this. On Battlefield and Small Battlefield, there's a bit more leniency for the explosion to connect on Greninja's dash because circles but even then i've been able to run under this thing so many times no problem so if there's c4 on a platform as you're running under it do not fucking jump please literally just stay grounded when running under it and you'll be able to bait snake into setting it off not explode and get an approach something else to note about c4 is that snake players often love to set it off from a respawn so even after you take a stock and start doing your high-tech victory dance be aware of where you're standing because that's kind of embarrassing all right so now that we've covered all snakes tools in neutral there's one one last thing that I did want to mention, even if it might seem super out there. The log from Greninja's substitute actually does so much fucking work in this matchup, it's insane. Like, I'm not even joking. If you have one of these on stage, it's generally not a bad idea to keep it around and play with it. Okay, let me back up my bold claim. So remember how I said that Snake's dash attack isn't reactable in neutral and you kind of have to bait it out? Throw back to part 5 of the guide. If Snake uses dash attack when you're behind log, he'll extend his hitbox off of this move. This makes it to where he's stuck in the attack's animation for even longer and now you can react to hit him for it. Something else is that if you whiff a counter, Snake might try to use up smash to cover your landing. But if he does this anywhere near log, that move straight up doesn't work anymore. Log can also really mess with Snake's setups. If he tries to toss a grenade out, Log can deflect it. And if he tries to toss out a Nikita in neutral, Log eats it. And the final thing is that if you counter and aim the kick towards the Log he spawned in, you can extend the hitbox and make your own low budget long counter without having to hold a grenade. And that can really mess with Snake's shield timings for a kill. Greninja has so much room for creativity in this matchup, so if there's something you think might work, give it a shot. All right, that should do it for neutral. And look at that, it only took us, what, half an hour? Holy crap, I'm back to making movies. I'm not done yet though, because now we have to talk about everyone's favorite state after Texas, advantage. So what you'll want to do against Snake is dash attack and then... Okay, what I meant to say was up throw up... Down tilt up, son of a bitch. Okay, this matchup's losing. Good luck, guys. No, I'm just kidding. Let's talk about Grenade Pool. So Grenade Pool is a very strong option for Snake. This thing comes out frame one, causes trades, and can completely reversal you when Snake's in disadvantage. But at the same time, it's not very good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not sure if you missed that apo, but you just showed a clip of Snake reversaling you to take the game. Yeah, I did, but I haven't told you about counterplay yet. Something that a lot of Greninja players don't realize is that Grenade is frame one not frame negative one. So as long as you're using true guaranteed combos, Snake can't get the grenade out. Dash attack back air? Sure. Down tilt forward air? Go ahead. Now down tilt up smash. As long as you're on top of your game with this combo, this is guaranteed. If Snake does manage to get the grenade out, all this means is that you're not up smashing in time and you have to do it a bit sooner. Okay, but what if I don't have any true combos available? How do I follow up without exploding? Uh, wait a second. No, that's literally it. Just wait. Once Snake commits to this grenade, realize that he can't do anything until he either tosses it or lands with it. This opens up so many ways for you to follow up. If you want dash attack forward smash, here you go. Nair shadow sneak, not a problem. Down tilt footstool grenade catch down air grenade toss shadow sneak, a bit technical, but yeah, that's a thing. Something to note is that Snake has the option to keep holding the nade here, causing a trade out of disadvantage. And whenever you look at where it's positioned in the grenade stance, it's actually behind Snake. So if Snake's facing you, you're free to follow up as long as you position your attacks to hit the front of Snake's body. Hell, even dash attack can work as long as you space it properly. The reason that this grenade even explodes most of the time is because Snake and the grenade have two different hurtboxes. And if you hit Snake, you're extending the hitboxes of your attacks to the point that the grenade falls out of Snake's hand, makes contact with an active hitbox, and then it explodes. So yeah, spacing. The thing that you do want to be aware of though is B reverses. If Snake B reverses a grenade, ignore everything that I just said. This is your cue to turn on Smooth Brain Elite Smash Mode. If Snake B reverses into Nade Stance, this grenade starts to cover what was his front and trying to space your moves will now start to cause trades. So what you want to do is forget spacing and go as far into Snake's body as possible. From here, you should be able to hit Snake without causing the grenade to fall into your active hitboxes. But to be honest with you guys, most Snake players don't B reverse their Nade pulls unless they're landing from 
from a juggle. So spacing your attacks to hit the front of Snake's body out of combos is generally the way to go. If you are scared about causing a trade though, the two moves that don't require different spacing for the B reverse are down tilt and grab. And considering how much down tilt can lead into for Gren, this is the main move that you'll want to use to punish nade stance. All right, so let's talk about the move that tends to cause trades the most, up air. There's a misconception that you can't use up air in this matchup, but that's not true at all. Up air is actually one of Greninja's best moves when it comes to dealing with grenade pull. Wait, if that's the case, then why do I always get blown up when I use it? I think that part of the reason for this is word of mouth. Whenever you hear people talking about counterplay the snake's grenade, it's always aim for his feet. Look, aim for his feet and you don't get blown up. Grenade's up here and if you hit his feet, you don't hit the grenade. While this does work for a lot of moves like Captain Falcon or Lucina's up airs, it's not quite that simple for Greninja. Greninja's up air is a multi-hit that lingers. Going back to what I said earlier about nade stance, this means that if you hit snake with one tiny hitbox of the up air, he'll drop the grenade and one of your hitboxes will eventually set it off as it falls into you. The way to fix this isn't to aim for Snake's feet, but to aim for his back. Wait, his back? Isn't that where you just said grenade is? When he's in grenade stance, yes. But check this out. First Snake has to actually pull the pin on the grenade and this animation is done in front of him. He doesn't do the color bean shit where he goes between the legs and slimmed, no. For 12 frames, this is in front of Snake and leaves his back wide open. So if you connect your up air on this side of Snake, you're totally fine. And once it does connect, it's probably best to drag him more in that same direction so that the grenade doesn't somehow fall into you. The reason that this works is because the hitbox on Greninja's up air is really skinny compared to someone like Banjo or Peach. So while you're hitting Snake, grenade's over here and you're not gonna blow it up. At the same time though, aiming for Snake's feet can be helpful in certain situations. If he's drifting back as he pulls a grenade, aiming for his back sometimes just isn't possible. If you're in a situation like this and do connect up air on his feet, Grenade doesn't keep Snake's momentum once he drops it. So just make sure that you keep moving in that direction and drag Snake away from the grenade if possible. And that's about it for Grenade out of combos. Guys, apart from Grenade Pull, Snake really doesn't have good options to get out of disadvantage. The dude's got a frame 4 air dodge, some of the worst jump height in the game, and no fast aerials to hit the opponent out of their move startup. If we look at something like Yoshi's double jump armor for example, you have to pretty much commit to covering it specifically. And if he chooses to air dodge instead, you just miss out on your punish. Let's compare that to hitting Snake with something like dash attack forward air. He tries to air dodge, I hit him. He tries to jump, I hit him. He pulls a grenade, I still fucking hit him. This makes dash attack forward air so fucking good in the matchup. Because of Snake's above 80, he straight up doesn't have an answer to this. So against Snake, forward air becomes a very good combo finisher. If Snake is anywhere near the edge of the stage and you connect the move that somewhat leads into forward air, you can use this to take stocks from him super consistently. Even at earlier percents, you can use this to beat his grenade pull without blowing up. Remember how I said that grenade spawns in front of Snake? Well, if you move in towards Snake as you connect this forward air, you can spawn the hitbox inside of him so that the grenade does doesn't detonate at all. And if you want to toss a cook grenade at him right after, screw it. The one combo that I would advise you to look out for against Snake though is up throw up air. I've tackled this whole dilemma before, but a lot of the time up throw up air just barely isn't true. And because grenade is frame one, Snake can often get it out to interrupt the multi hits from up air. So now you guys might be thinking, wait Apo, you just told us how to connect up air. Just aim for his back and you'll be fine, right? Well in this situation, aiming for Snake's back is super tricky. Optimally, you have to do some really awkward shit like dash for exactly one frame, enter jump squat the next, buffer a short hop up air, and then unironically hold in so that you don't overshoot with the up air. So yeah, just go ahead and weigh out the landing option. If he pulls a grenade, you can cover his landing. If he jumps, you know which direction he's going. In. And if he air dodges, you can dash attack. Wait, did we just get a juggle going from only grabbing Snake? Yes, we did. And now allow me to explain why this is fucking broken. Snake as a character really doesn't have the easiest time when it comes to landing. From just a movement perspective, again, Say it with me, that is ass. Bottom 26 airspeed and the worst air excel in the game doesn't make for the best drift away from your opponent. Because of this, Snake's gonna be relying on a lot of beer reverse options to throw off your attacks and hitboxes to catch you off guard. But even then, these options are still pretty mediocre. Let's tackle the most common option he'll be going for, which is a beer reverse grenade. While Snake has next to no air acceleration, he does have access to beer reversing. And whenever he does do this, he'll instantly shift his momentum from one direction into the other. The best way to deal with this is to expect it and 
not challenge Snake in the air. Because remember, this guy has to come down eventually. And until he tosses Grenade, he's pretty much stuck here in Grenade Snakes. If you have a feeling for when this is going to come out and just wait, you get to cover his landing with Dash Attack, Up Tilt, and Grab. On top of that, realize that Snake's airspeed means that he has to be decently high up to go anywhere with this. If you want to be ready, you can use Foxtrot to instantly change your direction to cover his landing once you see the B-Reverse Grenade come out. If possible though, you really want to try and hit him out of the air before he lands. The reason for this is that if he touches the ground in Nade Stance, he only has one frame of landing life. This means that if you time your dash attack wrong, he can shield. And if you try to grab him, he can spot dodge. In this situation, you're going to want to pay attention to the landing option that the snake player likes to use and be ready for it in case that you're not able to swat him out of the air. If he likes to stand grenade stance, recognize which way he's facing and follow up accordingly. If he likes to shield, be ready to grab. And if he likes to spot dodge, you can delay your option or stay at a safe range with any space attack. Against spot dodge specifically though, here's another option that you can do. If you're okay with trading, you can toss out a smash attack against this landing. While spot dodge's 15 frames of invincibility does normally go through forward smash's 3 frame lingering hitbox, there's a grenade right there. This means that you can extend the hitbox of forward smash to hit snake as soon as he's out of spot dodge's end like. And on top of that, you just made forward smash even stronger by having a nade go off as it connects. You can also do this with down smash at higher percents to cover both spot dodge and roll for a stock. Even if snake stays in shield, he's not going to be able to convert off of this because you pretty much just bomb jumped away from him. For only taking 10%, I think it's definitely a fair option to consider. If you want a safe option that the very least covers everything to some degree, down tilt is pretty solid. If he's in grenade stance, this doesn't blow you up. If he shields, it's safe on shield. And if he spot dodges, you're far enough away to where a lot of his attacks cannot reach you. But generally speaking, catching snake while he's still up in the air with up tilt grab or a dash attack is your best play. Wait, dash attack? How is that supposed to hit Snake in the air when the hitbox is way down here? Bro, don't fucking sleep on this move. I'm not even kidding you when I say that dash attack is even better than up tilt for catching Snake's landings. This thing is actually ridiculous, and here's why. Something that Snake doesn't have access to in Nade Stance is fast falling, meaning that if Snake ever pulls a grenade, you now have two pieces of incredibly useful information. You know exactly which direction he's forced to move in, and you know exactly how long it's going to take for him to hit the ground. Hmm, let's combine this information with the fact that Greninja's run speed is more than twice that of Snake's airspeed and dash attack lingers for 5 frames. Guys, lining up this dash attack to connect before Snake even touches the ground is so fucking consistent. Because Snake isn't able to fast fall here, there's a 3 frame window before Snake touches the ground where dash attack's hitbox will connect. Add that to the 5 frame lingering hitbox and you now have an 8 frame window for this move to catch the landing. And remember, Snake can't fast fall out of Nate's stance, meaning that this timing is always going to be the same. There's no mix up. On top of that, Grenade being higher up in the air means that after hitting Snake's nade stance, this thing isn't going to fall into your dash attack and cause you to explode. So you can either try and time it up tilt to hit Snake's feet without getting hit by the grenade, or just use dash attack and be completely fine. And because this is mainly going to be the later hitbox of dash attack that connects, this gives you so much more frame advantage. Like, it's ridiculous. If we pull up the smash calculator and look at how much frame advantage we normally get off of dash attack, we'll see that this move scales pretty poorly with percent. Against Snake at 50 for example, we have 16 frames of hit advantage. Okay, so what about at 150? That's got to be a huge difference, right? Three frames. Yeah, <laughs> as much as dash attack might lead into, this thing scales really poorly with percent. However, if we were to connect the frame 5 hitbox of dash attack instead of the frame 1 hitbox, that's a 4 frame difference in terms of frame advantage. And because we're relying on the lingering hitbox in this interaction against Snake, we can do that pretty damn consistently. This opens up so many combo routes for Greninja that wouldn't normally be available. And remember that dash attack forward air we talked about? Well, that shit reads true at 65. So if you catch a landing with dash attack at 100, there's a good chance that you're straight up gonna kill Snake for it. Even if this doesn't kill, remember, Snake hasn't touched the ground yet, so if he burned his double jump at all, he doesn't get it back. This opens up so many opportunities for edge guards. So be aware of the interaction and stay on the lookout for opportunities to catch Snake with dash attack instead of up tilt. Something else to note though is that a lot of Snake players really like to do light tosses out of this B reverse landing. What this means is that they're stuck in the throw animation long enough for you to get an even stronger punish. If you have the read, go ahead and follow up. So C4, this thing is way deadlier than grenades are and it can completely reversal you for a stock if you're 
you're not ready for it. Like a lot of snakes options, the best way to deal with it is to expect it and respect it. And if C4 is already on the stage, he straight up doesn't have access to it as a landing option. If he does have access to C4 though, you'll want to be very careful with how you go about chasing him. The best way to play around this move is to stay grounded and focus on catching his landing. Just like with Grenade, Snake's able to instantly reverse his momentum with a B reverse here. But also, he's able to spawn in and dead C4 really quickly. And if you guess wrong with something like an up air, you're going to be at a very high risk of losing your stock. So remember that whole section I did covering C4 on platforms? Try and treat this pretty much the same way. Again, what this means is don't jump. Come on guys, circles. By staying grounded, you're putting yourself at a much lower risk of being hit by this move. You're almost twice as fast on the ground as you are in the air, and being low means that you're tangential to C4's hitbox and don't have to worry about exploding nearly as much. And if Snake commits to the debt, again, that's an opportunity for you to catch his landing. He's not able to be reversed out of this debt part of the move, meaning that it's an entire window where he can't fast fall or change his direction. You don't have to worry about one frame landing lag either, so punish his landing however you see fit. The final landing option is back air. Compared to grenades in C4, this one isn't all that much trickier to deal with. It's more of a call out move that Snake will use if you're chasing him too closely. It lingers for a while, can control a decent amount of space, and trades with the multi hits of grenades up here pretty consistently. The way to beat it though is to, you guessed it, stay grounded. I keep on coming back to this, but again, Snake has really, really bad air excel. So if he's moving in one direction, that backer is going to follow him in that direction. The difference between this move and grenades or C4 though, is that he still has access to his fast fall and you're not entirely sure when he's going to hit the ground. On top of that, this is his one landing option that does beat dash attack. But guys, this thing has 19 frames of landing lag and the auto cancel window isn't friendly in the slightest. So if Snake chooses to land with this move, he's pretty much committing to belly flopping on the ground. And if you stay out of its range, you're free to follow up however you see fit. Something else to consider is how well Greenwich is able to bait out this option from Snake. As I mentioned earlier, his back air is really good at trading with the multi hits of up air. So if you give Snake something to believe, you can trick him into committing to the back air. Greninja has the second highest jump height and the ninth fastest fall speed. This means that you're often able to jump up, bait Snake into tossing it out, and come back down to the ground for a punish. And if you really have the read, you can abuse your jump height to meet him in midair and connect substitute for a kill. Guys, juggling Snake isn't impossible and it's not something that Greninja struggles with either. I've just shown you so many ways that Greninja can abuse his tools that no other character can. Everyone just hits Snake with up air, trades with grenade, and thinks that they lose the matchup because of it. That's really not a good mentality to have. So instead of thinking what's wrong, it's time to start thinking what's possible. And I'll tell you what's possible. Taking stocks incredibly early. Let's talk about edge guarding. As much as Snake players might go off about how mediocre their landing options are, you really want to prioritize putting Snake off stage. This is because Greninja has much stronger tools to capitalize on Snake's recovery while getting more reward than just juggling. Think about it. You can spend all day dash attacking Snake's landings for damage or just call out his recovery once. Because of this, I really do believe that unless you have a guaranteed kill, putting Snake off stage should be your main priority and advantage thing. This means ending strings in forward air or back air, going for positional throws, and angling your counter to launch Snake off stage if possible. All right, cool. Now let's talk about how to close out stocks once this guy's off stage. Starting with the Zuppy. So a lot of people look at Greninja's kit and think that he doesn't have the best ways to deal with Cypher. Cypher has heavy armor, meaning that it takes 8.4% to hit Snake out of it. And compared to a lot of characters like Lucina, Cloud, or Joker, Greninja's doesn't have the best attacks to hit Snake out of this. Greninja's best move for edge guarding is his back air, which is a multi-hit. While this move does linger and control a ton of space, it being a multi-hit means that the final hit is what determines whether or not you hit Snake out of Cypher. And when we look at the damage that back air does, yeah, it doesn't quite hit the 8.4% threshold. So what are we supposed to do? Don't worry, there's an easy fix. If you go into your rule sets options menu under the advanced section and enable underdog boost, now you should see that, oh wait, that's not how to deal with Cypher? Okay, scratch that. Let's talk about Shadow Sneak. Shadow Sneak is Greninja's most reliable move for hitting Snake out of Cypher. While this normally isn't a very good move for edge guarding, it's super strong against Snake. You know how you'll kill super early if you call out your opponent's option off stage with Shadow Sneak? If Snake does up the off stage, he pretty much becomes a Shadow Sneak magnet and you're able to take stocks from him very early. The second that Snake inputs his up B, he's stuck in this animation for a whole 40 frames before he's able to act out. And compared to a lot of other characters, he really doesn't have too many mix-ups. So if you literally just toss out a Shadow Snake in his general direction, you're able to close out stocks 
very consistently. And while he can act out after 40 frames, sometimes the guy just has to take the hit. Like, what are you gonna do down here? Air dodge doesn't reach the ledge, and if you let go of Cypher, you don't get it back. Screw it, free Shadow Snake. The one mix-up that Snake does have is double jumping into Cypher. This makes him rise with a move immediately, meaning that you'll have to be ready to Shadow Snake ahead of time if you see it coming. This is the reason that Snake's double jump is so valuable to him. If we look at him using Cypher without a double jump, this is super exploitable. Without a double jump, Snake actually dips with a move before he goes anywhere, meaning that you can react to the input and just run off Shadow Snake for free. So make sure to pay attention to the option you catch Snake doing in disadvantage. And if you catch his jump, be ready to follow up. Also, with the way that Snake's LP works, you can afford to go super deep for Shadow Snakes. Whenever you hit Snake off with Cypher, he immediately lets go of it, causing it to stall in place for a bit before flying up in the air again. And, uh... That's a hitbox. What this means is that you can aim to Hydro Pump into the Cypher and get a second pump for free. And when it comes to edge guarding with Shadow Sneak, now you can basically double your already massive recovery distance to go even deeper for edge guards. The one thing to note though, is that Cypher can cause tumble and stage spike. I would say at higher percents, but that's not fucking true. I have no idea why, but this thing's not back skill so much with Rage. If Snake's at zero, this won't send Greninja to tumble until 130. But if he's at 150, now it can cause tumble at 59. Yeah. Yeah, don't ask me why. Anyways, if you plan on recovering off of Cypher or even just hitting Snake off of it, be ready to do the upbeat option select so that you tech if you need to. And if you want the actual tumble percentages spreadsheet that I put together, here you go. There's actually an argument to be made that Greninja can exploit Snake's recovery more than any other character in the game. Shadow Snake combined with Greninja's recovery lets you get into so many positions where other characters straight up don't have the tools to reach Snake. Even if Snake's underneath Battlefield, I don't give a shit. I'm still gonna get a kill off of this. Also, here's something I found out pretty recently about Shadow Snake. If you input the Shadow Snake behind Greninja in this fashion, you'll get the reverse hitbox every time. And if we compare the launch angles, the reverse hit is a bit more reliable for killing Snake off the top rather than the side. I mean, don't get me wrong, it can still kill off the side blast zone, but it's not as good at doing so compared to the forward hitting Shadow Snake. Hmm, only if there's a way to connect that forward Shadow Snake. No, you guys know where this is going. If you charge Shadow Snake backwards and then jump before releasing it, you're able to get the forward Shadow Snake of this move to come out behind Greninja. And if you've ever use this move off stage, you already know how deadly this thing is. Pretty cool, right? Well, here's even more Shadow Sneak tech. Remember how I said that back air lingers and covers a ton of space? Well, if you really miss back air that much, let's just go ahead and turn it into a special move. Again, just tossing out Shadow Sneak in Snake's general direction can be a super consistent way to take stocks. And if you happen to hit the Cypher, you'll actually extend Shadow Sneak's hitbox to last for 20 frames and hit Snake off stage as he moves into it. So yeah, there's almost no reason to not go off stage and at the very least attempt an edge guard on Snake. The amount of mileage that you can get from just guessing is insane. That's that's not to say that Shadow Snake is your only option to edge guard Snake though. While I do believe that it's Greninja's best option, you're still free to catch Snake with Forward Air, Hydro Pump, and Water Shirt. As for Forward Air, this move doesn't see as much usage for edge guarding Cypher as Shadow Snake does, but it can come up every once in a while. If you see Snake in a position where you can call his recovery with it and still kill, it's not as committal as a Shadow Snake. You're not nearly as flexible with this move, but if you see something like a high recovery coming out, feel free to use it. Hydro Pump and Water Shuriken though, these two can put in work. If you're not quite in a position to catch Snake's recovery with Shadow Snake, Hump can give you certain angles to still pressure him from. And since Snake is already moving vertically with his Zuppy, the pushback from this move is actually insane. This can allow you to at the very least catch Snake's landing from high up and apply all that knowledge I just dropped in the juggling section. Also, there's a way to kill Snake at zero off of this, which I'll get to in a bit. Ooh, foreshadowing. The only thing to note is that if you connect Pump on the actual Cypher, it won't cause any pushback and just eat the wind box. So make sure that you're aiming for Snake's body and not Top of his head! <laughs> As for shurikens, the mid-charge version of these things actually do knock Snake off of Cypher. This is super helpful for when Snake is recovering from far off stage and you don't want to go too deep with Shadow Snake. So if you see the opportunity, go ahead and snipe him for a stock. Something that might be worth mentioning is the mid-air combo potential behind these things. You can actually get combos like mid-shuriken into forward air on Di-Yin, so that's at the very least something to consider if you're in position. So Snake presses up B and we're able to get a kill off of this every time, right? Well, I'll get to that. <laughs> But just because Snake press up beat does not mean that you're able to guarantee a kill. There are a few options that you're going to want to look out for, and these mainly come from different forms of stalling that Snake has. Two of which are the standard C4 stall and this grenade into Nikita cancel air dodge shit. The second one has a lot of names, so I'm just going to call it Nikita stalling, which I tend to see a lot. Alright, let's cover what happens in each of these situations. In the C4 stall, Snake enters Cypher, goes up a bit, drops the C4, detonates it, and then has access to Cypher again. I've seen some crazy ID 
ideas for counterplay floating around, like going out and foot slowing Snake out of the explosion so that he goes back down into the blast zone, and uh, yeah, that's pretty tricky. So if you want to kill Snake for stalling, here's all you have to do. That's it! By literally tapping Snake with Pump, you're able to throw off his entire stalling setup so that he doesn't get hit by the explosion. Again, this guy sucks in the air, so if you push him one way, he's straight up not making it back into the explosion hitbox. And because Hydro Pump is a win box, he doesn't get his Cypher back from this. You're able to kill Snake for stalling from way over here. No having to position yourself so that you foot stall him just right, and no risk of being reversal. Just a free stop. And if you want to snap ledge as he pumps so that you don't have any end lag, go ahead. If Snake chooses to drop out of Cypher at all, you get a free kill. What you do want to consider is the amount of time that it takes for Snake to set up his stalling up. For something like C4, Snake's able to spawn and death this pretty quickly. This means that you're going to have to expect the option before you go for the pump if you want to get a kill off of it. What's good about this though is that if you connect pump on Snake and push him while he's in Cypher, you don't have to worry about inertia, because fuck physics. You can have a piece of paper fighting a chainsaw anime dragon in this game. You think we give a shit about physics? Snake goes flying that way, and C4 goes straight down. And because of this distance, here's your game. But looking at Nikita slowing on the other hand, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to kill Snake from this. Unlike C4 slowing, you don't have to predict this at all. Remember, grenade takes two and a half seconds to go off. And if he light tosses a grenade at all off stage, that's more than enough time for you to react, run into position, and get them with pump before the explosion even goes off. Not to mention, you can use water shurikens to clank with the light toss grenades in midair and throw off the setup completely. So yeah, you can pretty much cover everything a snake just presses up beat. One option that snake players really like to do is recover high. Instead of giving you the chance to kill them for recovering the ledge, a lot of them will rather just go up above the top blast zone and land with their beer reverse nades, C4, Nikita, and back air. Guess what? Greenwich covers this too. If you've ever wanted to fish for clips of roofing the opponent with hydro pump, Oh boy, this is the matchup for it. If you jump high enough and aim your pump just right, you're able to kill Snake for this every time. What I will say though, is that you don't want to tunnel vision this option and use it sparingly. If you try to go for the roof every time, eventually the Snake player is going to catch on and cancel their Cypher onto the stage while you're in analog from pump. So in this situation, there's two possible ways to beat Snake after he drops from Cypher. There's a double jump up air and hope to god I don't blow up way, and the what the fuck apo this shit is broken way. You can probably tell which one I prefer. So for the first method, recognize that you're playing a character with an insane jump height, and if you manage to connect an upper when Snake is already way the hell up here, you're gonna be able to connect some pretty consistent kills. But again, remember, grenade. For 12 frames, this thing is in front of Snake, so if you're gonna aim to catch his high recovery, aim for his back. In this situation though, risk versus reward is something that you really want to consider. Remember how I gave you all that brief saying that it's best not to challenge Snake in the air? If you're at 100 and Snake is only at 20, don't fucking do this. The risk versus reward isn't in your favor at all. You're only one C4 or grenade away from losing your stock up here. If the rules are reversed though and Snake's the one at 100, here you go. The risk versus reward is way better in this situation. So if you don't want to run the risk of being reversaled, just wait it out and try to catch his landing option. Or do the second tech which I'll cover in a minute here. Also, remember that Snake isn't only limited to landing with grenades. He can make it rain explosives on you as they cover his landing. And because he's way up here, it's pretty tricky to see what he's landing with. So instead, just listen to Snake. I need to administer a quick shot. So, if you don't like needles, I suggest you look away now. Um, not like that. So if you hear him pull a grenade, be ready for it. If you hear him start to death C4, be ready for that as well. And here's a brief ASMR segment so that you hear what both of those sound like. Now. And from there, just reference the section on catching Snake's landings. A new option that Snake gets from up here though is Nikita. <coughs> this thing can make the most random plays happen, but it's not something to necessarily be afraid of, and the risk versus reward is almost always in your favor. So first of all, recognize that this is a cancelled Nikita and not an active one. This means that if it does connect on you, the knockback is actually incredibly weak and you're almost never going to be at the risk of dying to it. On top of that, the priority of this move is super low, meaning that if you just have a hitbox out, this move isn't going to be able to hit you until it touches the ground. So you're able to get moves out like up air or up smash to hit snake uninterrupted here. And just like with grenade, 
grenades, the timing of this thing is predictable. If you see the opportunity and want to counter it for a kill, go ahead. All right, now let's move on to the what the fuck app of this shit is broken way to kill snake. So just a bit of a warning guys, the inputs for this method are really tricky to do and you're definitely going to want to go into training mode to allow this out. And even then, it might take you a couple of weeks before you're able to get it in. Yeah, this shit's broken. So as I said in the section about stalling, if Snake drops out of Cypher, he doesn't get his recovery back. So if you manage to push Snake off stage with Pump here, not even kidding, you're able to kill him at zero. This interaction is so common and Greninja players are not exploiting it at all. So many things work in Greninja's favor here. First of which being, if Snake uses a Cypher, he immediately loses his double jump even if he didn't use it to instantly rise with the move. This means that his only hope to get back to the ledge is to air dodge, which you can punish if he somehow does manage to reach it. And for for the 700th time, this guy's movement sucks. And if he's in there going in one direction, he cannot stop going in that direction. The only thing he has access to is B reversing. And if you call it something like a landing B reverse grenade with Hydro Pump, the Windbox will see that he suddenly shifted his momentum and do even more knockback, pushing him further off stage. From here, remember, he can't do shit out of nade stance until he either tosses the grenade or touches the ground. And because he's off stage, touching the ground isn't an option for him. So if he tosses the nade, he has to first go through the animation, which is even more time than he's spending falling in the air, meaning that once he can act again, it will be too low for his air dodge to even reach the ledge. Having no access to his double jump or cypher also means that he has no offstage stalling options to get back to the ledge. He can try to hold onto the grenade until it goes off, but guess what? Remember how I said that Snake's only decent movement attribute is fall speed, even if he pulls nade from the same height as the top platform on battlefield, he falls fast enough to where the 2.5 second fuse for the nade doesn't go off before he hits the bottom blast zone. You can use this tech and kill snake at any percent. And now this is the part where you guys say, what the fuck capo, this shit is broken. All right, so now that you've shown Snake that going high with Cypher is an incredibly risky option, he might start looking to land onto the stage instead. And since Snake is intentionally dropping out of Cypher from way lower here, you're able to hit him with attacks much more effectively. The frame that Snake lets go of Cypher, he loses his heavy armor. This means that if you time your attacks to hit the end of it properly, moves like back air and upper can now start to hit Snake and send him into tumble. While upper does work for this, I'd say that back air has a bit more use. Again, remember, our priority and advantage is to put Snake off stage. By using back air, you're able to hit him back off stage where he has no double jump and has to dip with Cypher before going up with it. And from here, you just lined up an easy Shadow Snake. This can be super helpful in situations where you don't have a Shadow Snake lined up to cover him dropping out of Cypher onto the stage. If Snake chooses to drop out of Cypher with something like a frame 4 air dodge, back air's frame 5 lingering hitbox can cover the startup while trying to time something like a frame 29 Shadow Snake is pretty much guaranteed the win. And if Shadow Snake doesn't kill on stage, back air sets up for an offstage Shadow Snake near the Last zone where it will kill. And at higher percents where Shadow Sneak is way overkill, you could just line up a much less committal backer for a stock. So yeah, recognize this interaction and start putting your backers where Snake's gonna end up. That's not to say that you can't use upper though. Upper's launching hit itself is pretty weak from this height, but at the very least, you can get some combos going at lower percents where backer won't send Snake off stage or do some fast wall improv shenanigans. If you're not in a position to cash a cypher onto the stage, you're gonna want to pressure his landing. Again, you can reference the section on juggling but you're going to want to be on the lookout for a few of the more common options out of this situation. First of which being fast fall neutral air dodge. Unlike in tumble, Snake is able to immediately fast fall after letting go of Cypher, and he can combine this with his air dodge so that he falls with iframes. And if you try catching his landing with something like an up tilt, he can air dodge through it. As tempting as it might be to meet him in the air, stay grounded versus this. If you have something like a short hop up air, Snake can immediately fast fall air dodge through this and up tilt you for a stock. Again, dash attack is great for beating this option while covering a bunch of of others. If you stay out of the range of back air, you're able to time dash attack so that it hits Snake once he touches the ground and enters the 10 frames of landing lap. By the way guys, 10 frames is a pretty significant amount of time. So if you have the read on this option, you can punish him with a forward smash, down tilt up smash, or really anything that you see fit. One of the most common options that Snake likes to do here is be reverse towards the ledge. This mainly comes in the form of a nade pull, since trying to place in death c4 leaves Snake off stage falling into the blast zone without cypher. But wait a minute, Snake can't grab ledge nade stance. And Snake can't exit nade stance until either tosses the nade or touches the ground. I don't see any ground here. If Snake commits to the beer versus nade here, he has to toss it in order to live. And remember how I said that the toss animation lets you follow up for an even harder punish? He's putting himself even closer to the blast zone, giving you a perfect opportunity to forward smash him out of the toss animation. Recognize that this is a very common option for Snake players to do in this position and just be ready to kill them at 50 for it. 
Well, if you didn't already get them with Hydro Pump. Something that not enough players recognize is that Snake cannot be reverse Cypher, meaning that if he's facing the Blast Zone as you hit him off stage, he's gonna continue facing it if he uses his up B. What makes this very good for us is the fact that Snake isn't able to snap to ledge when facing backwards. Either nobody knows about this or nobody's exploiting it. I've seen so many free kills just get ignored by people just not following up for some reason. If Snake ever uses Cypher backwards, you can hit him with Down Smash for a kill as he exposes his body past the ledge. To get around this, Snake players will usually try to directional air dodge or land on the stage with back air. Directional air dodge loses a down smash and dash attack, and we already covered back air. If you want to set up for a backward cypher, Greninja's back throw is really good at this. If you back throw a snake off stage, he'll continue facing the blossom. And if he wants to turn around, he'll have to do something like a beer versus nade toss, which can really open him up to edge cards. If you just recognize the backward cypher to ledge, so many opportunities to kill snake will start to present themselves. Tiny little detail, but it's something that I thought really needed addressing. Okay, so we've covered high ciphers, mid ciphers, ciphers off stage, cipher stalling, and backward ciphers. Why haven't we talked about the option that you would literally expect Snake to do and Cypher to ledge? To be honest with you guys, this option in itself doesn't have too much counterplay. I know it sounds lame, but your best bet in this scenario is to stick to ledge trapping. But if you think about it, what does Snake have to do to get back to ledge in the first place? He has to double jump up B, dip with Cypher, or directional air dodge. We've gone over all of these options already. By staying on stage, you're throwing away so many opportunities that you have to kill Snake and just give him a free ledge snap. This is why it's so important to at the very least, pressure his recovery. You can get kills on this guy below 100 super consistently, so don't just stand there. Make him have to guess and work to get back to the ledge. But with that said, I do understand that there are times where you're not quite able to get into position to line up an edge card. Generally speaking, this is where we resort to ledge trapping, but there are a few options that can help you to still pressure his recovery. Something you can try to do is two frame snake's recovery with down smash, but even this is a little ill advised. If you miss a two frame and snake snaps ledge, he'll let go of Cypher immediately putting you into hit stun or possibly even tumble and give him a window to get off of ledge. And even if you do connect the two frame, it's kind of an error on the snake player's part. Cypher being able to take damage from attacks can often extend two framing options to hit snake as he moves up into them. A lot of snake players know about this, so they usually like to air dodge up off of Cypher and snap to ledge so that the Cypher hits the opponent of their attacks animation or throws off their spacing for the two frame. So lining up two frames against a snake player that knows what they're doing isn't the most consistent thing in the world. If you can manage to get off stage and want a cheeky option and cover his ledge snap though, here's something you can do. Remember the log extended shadow sneak tech that I showed off in part 5? This also works with snake's up B. If you aim to connect shadow sneak on cypher as snake goes to snap to the ledge, you can extend its hitbox for a stage spike. And because shadow sneak now lasts for 20 frames, this makes it pretty tricky to tech. Even if snake does manage to tech the shadow sneak, he's still in a very awkward position. Pay attention to the way that snake is facing, towards the blast zone. Now you can apply all that backward cypher tech. He's no longer able to snap to the ledge giving you a potential follow-up or at the very least allowing you to reset the situation. And remember, Snake can act out of Cypher for 40 frames. Not to mention that Cypher uses Snake's double jump and he has a dip if he wants to use it again. So if you want to stage spike his ass over and over until it's untechable, go ahead. And if the Snake player tech wall jumps, that's on him. No air excel means that now he's forced to continue going towards the blast zone with Cypher. From here, he's mainly going to depend on going high with Cypher and air dodging from 20 feet in the air to either snap to ledge or end up on stage. That's such a free punish. But anyways, if you want the untechable percents for Shadow Sneak, here you go. And again, if you're not in a position to threaten his recovery, you'll generally want to stick to ledge trapping. Let's talk about that a bit. So in all honesty, Snake's options of a ledge are pretty bad, and he doesn't really have a good way to reverse the situation. With his get up options being as poor as they are, he's mainly going to be looking to choose an option, try to immediately hit you off of him, and get a setup going afterwards. Because of this, you don't want to commit to laggy options when ledge trapping. If you go a bit too ham with the short hop forward airs, down smashes, and forward smash reads, he can find a window to get up and punish you with something fast like an F tilt. So instead, look to use quicker low commitment options. Moves like down tilt, forward tilt, and nair are all great for this. Once you realize how limited snake's options are at ledge, you can get away with ledge trapping him for so much more compared to other characters. This is because if snake doesn't have some kind of a setup at ledge, he essentially only has two get up options. Yeah. Two. So why is that? Snake's attacks off of ledge are really, really bad. First of all, his get up attack has a second worst range out of any character in the game. This means that you can get super close to ledge without being at the risk of getting hit and losing your position. It also means that if you're standing in the right spot, you don't have to worry about shielding and can just focus on covering his option on reaction. On top of having an awful get up attack, Snake doesn't really have access to a ledge drop aerial and that's for a number of reasons. First of which being that again, Snake's double jump is super valuable to him. And 
and if he's hit out of it, Cypher suddenly becomes that much more exploitable. And beyond that, he'd only really be able to use Nair or Down Air to get off of ledge. Wait a minute, Down Air's frame 3. That should make it an amazing option, right? Um, no. The opposite, actually. If you think back to about an hour ago in this video, yes, it's been an hour, you'll recall that Snake's Down Air out of shield has next to no range. When he uses it off of ledge, pretty much the same is true. On top of this move not even connecting until the frame 17 hitbox, I just avoided the entire thing by taking one step back. Since this thing takes forever to come out, something that Snake players will usually opt to do is ledge jump down air. This can allow for Snake to boost his ledge jump to reach center stage while keeping his double jump if he's hit out of it. But still, this really is isn't something to be worried about. Remember how down air isn't the most consistent move of snakes? If snake chooses this option, it's never gonna fully connect on you unless he catches a jump. Not to mention that after the final kick of the move, snake is stuck in the animation for a whole 30 frames before he's able to act again. If you tap him just once with something like a back air, he's back off stage for a potential edge guard. And if you catch his landing after the down air with dash attack, you've suddenly opened him up to juggles, edge guards, and kill confirms like that. This is the reason that ledge jumping also isn't a very good option for snake. His landing options are just that exploitable. Especially off of ledge where beer verse options put him back onto ledge? Yeah. It's really tricky for Snake to get back to center stage here. As for Nair off of ledge, this thing really shouldn't be bothering you. If you're positioned properly, only the final hit is able to connect on you off of ledge. And considering that it doesn't come out until frame 36, you're chilling. If you do see this option come out, you can genuinely just hit Snake out of it. The first three kicks have no real disjoint, and even Grenade's forward tilt will beat it. And again, now he's off stage without jump. If you want an even harder punish against it, just take a step back. This thing has 16 frames of landing lag, giving you a super wide window to follow up. So if Snake chooses any of these options, he's really putting himself at the risk of getting hit back into disadvantage. So if Snake knows that he's gonna end up on ledge, he'll probably recognize how ass his options are and try to get some support from Grenade so that he can time his get up options around them. Two things about this. One, that's an A toss off stage, meaning that he's completely open to being hit out of the toss animation. And two, him committing to the toss animation tells you that he's gonna have to recover low afterwards. Don't be afraid to hit Snake out of this. If you can just skip the whole ledge trapping process for an immediate edge guard, go ahead by all means. If you are gonna stay on ledge though, try and avoid these uncooked grenades. Yes, I know, they only do two damage and you can play around the fuse timer, but Snake is pretty much praying that the nades hit you so that he has some kind of support for getting off of ledge. The nade has to make contact with you in order to give Snake any kind of support. And if Snake misses the nade toss, these things bounce, meaning that any chance he had at controlling ledge is instantly gone to center stage. Don't fall asleep against this and ledge trapping will get that much easier. But anyways, let's get back to those two options that Snake has off of ledge, neutral get up, and roll. Something about only having two options to worry about is that covering them both at the same time isn't a problem at all. Moves like forward tilt, pivot grab, and backer are great for this since they're pretty non-committal and still allow you to pressure his landing if he chooses the ledge jump. I'd say that each one of these moves has a different use based mainly on the percent window and what you're trying to do with it. For forward tilt, you're mainly going to want to use this at mid percents to cover roll and at high percents to cover neutral get up. Again, it covers both options, but it gives you a bit more reward if you have a feeling as to which one is coming out. What's so good about forward tilt is that it has a three frame lingering hitbox, meaning that the timing for catching neutral get ups is a lot more lenient. And even if Snake does manage to shield the forward tilt, remember, spacing on Snake shield is completely safe and this can help you to open him up in the corner. So what can you get off of forward tilt? At mid percents against neutral get up, this isn't going to do all that much. It can knock Snake off stage and give you a potential edge guard, but he's often able to immediately double jump Cypher back to ledge before you're able to get into position for a shadow sneak. Against ledge roll though, whoa. Foretold actually has an inside hitbox and this can combo into dash attack. And dash attack can combo into back air. So if you want to carry snake off stage and set up for an edge guard, this is pretty solid. Also, remember that dash attack forward air is super consistent against snake. So if you see the opportunity, you can outright kill snake by landing this. At higher percents, Foretold is like your best friend for ledge trapping. Calling out neutral get ups with this is a super consistent way to net kills against snake. Since Foretold has very little hit lag, it's often able to catch people off guard before they even have a chance to DI. And if you can angle the forward tilt up, even better. Now you're able to kill a whole 15% earlier. The one kind of unfortunate part about F tilt at high percents though, is that it doesn't really give too much reward versus ledge roll. The inside hitbox connecting at high percents is pretty much the same thing as the outside hitbox connecting at mid percents. It covers the option, you're just not getting too much off of it. Something that's super underappreciated about forward tilt is that you're able to instantly turn around with it. You can combine this with short hops while having your back facing the ledge to fake a back air and then cover Snake's get up option afterwards for a kill. This is a pretty solid way to condition neutral get up 
Pulse, which you can really start to abuse once you get the ring. On to Pivot Grab. Pivot Grab is kind of your middle of the road, covers everything decently well option. Against Neutral Get Up, it's especially good since it can cover Neutral Get Up to Spot Dodge in a 4 frame window and still grabs the opponent if they go straight into Shield. It even has enough range to cover Ledge Roll while you're at it. Compared to Forward Tilt, you cover everything but you're trading the highs and lows for a more average reward. So if you don't necessarily have an idea as to which option the Snake player is going to choose, this can give you a download while still covering the Get Up. From early to mid percents, you can choose up throw snake and start a juggle. Up throw up air is also doable, but you already know my take on that. Once you do hit mid percents though, I would really recommend going for something that puts snake off stage instead. Because as we learned, one shadow sneak equals one stock. The best way to set this up is with a down throw into back air. This can put snake decently far off stage in a pretty solid position for you to get an edge guard or threaten a high recovery. The thing about this though is that down throw back air isn't true on DIOA. Instead of looking at this as something negative, let's just turn it into something positive. If you notice that the snake player likes to DI your down throw backers away, you can just go for a raw forward throw. DIOA makes forward throws set at a pretty steep angle, and this can give you many more opportunities to connect shadow sneaks on low recoveries. Now you've essentially just given yourself a 50-50 that can take stocks at 50. How crazy is that? Speaking of 50-50s, down throw at high percents can lead into a pretty good one. Against DIN, down throw back air is guaranteed and can close out stocks pretty consistently. This works so well because the opponent is often scared of forward throw and doesn't want to DI out against a kill throw. Only if they knew how ass our forward throw is. But if they do know how ass your forward throw is and they don't give you the DIN, forward air is pretty damn good at beating out snake's option. You can use this blue DI line off of down throw to see what DI the opponent gives you. If it goes straight up, go for the back air. Otherwise, go for the forward air or try to cover their escape option with something like an up air. The blue DI line definitely takes some getting used to, but considering how down throw gives you more than 20 frames to react to it before you can even input an option, you're really going to want to start paying attention to it. And also, the same 50-50 edge guard setup with forward air can work here as well, and that can lead into some pretty nice shuriken snipes. If you manage to connect the pivot grab on snake at a really high percent and you consider going for a forward throw, first of all, ask yourself. Would my up throw kill? If the answer is yes, use up throw. While forward throw is a kill throw, being at pivot grab range absolutely destroys the chances of it killing. If you see one of these three magic numbers, go for up throw instead. If the answer to the F throw up throw dilemma is no, my up throw will not kill, either start to pummel or just go for the forward throw. F throw does 8% damage so that up throw can start to kill, put snake off stage for a potential edge guard, and can reset the ledge trap scenario. Trust me, you don't want to lose the match to an F up throw. So back air. This is what I consider to be the no matter what, this is a good option. Option. Back air's hitbox is essentially out for 10 frames, meaning that if you have the timing down for Snake's get up option, you can hit him for it every time. Not to mention that this can catch ledge jump, has very low unlock, can be timed differently, can still be drifted out of while active, strings into itself, sends at a great angle for edge guards, kills at high percents, and beats off Snake's ledge drop aerials, putting him back off stage without a jump, ready for you to exploit the cypher day. This move is great, and there's a reason as to why autopiloting it can work so well. But yeah, back air is incredibly good, and you can get a consistently good reward when using it. You know what you're gonna get, and backer's gonna get it for you. Okay, as good as our ledge trapping options are, sometimes you're gonna mistime your punish, or Snake's still gonna manage to get off of ledge. This is why it's so important to use low commitment options. Even though Snake is off of ledge, now he's in the corner, and we're out of our attack sound like ready to pressure him. Again, Snake's goal after he gets off of the ledge is to hit you off of him so that he has some breathing room to get a setup going. The most important thing to do here is to hold stage and not be the one to approach. We've covered this in neutral, but Snake has really, really good with punishing tools with next to no startup. While dashing bat might not be as viable of an option for Snake here, his dash attack and up tilt by themselves can control the horizontal and vertical space so well. Trying to force an interaction at this close of a range really opens you up to scrapping, which is exactly what Snake wants. If you hold center and play it slow, now you can bait out his approach options and hit him back off stage. That's way better than getting up tilted for trying to use Nair. Some of the most common options that Snake will look to do out of the corner are dash attack, down tilt, grab, and roll. But to be honest with you guys, expect dash attack. So many snake players will go for it in this position, so being ready to whiff punish it can do a ton for you. Alright, let's move on to something that doesn't rely on you messing up, conditioning. Conditioning at ledge boils down to using or faking an option so that your opponent plays around that option and chooses another option to get around your option option. Think of that backwards facing short hop forward tilt I mentioned earlier. By doing short hops with my back face towards the opponent, this conditions them to think that a back air is coming. At this point, they're thinking, hey, the airspace is closed, let me do a grounded get up option to get around that back air. But whenever they choose the neutral get up, you don't go for the back air, but you go for the forward tilt instead and get a kill. There are a ton of baits like this that you can use, and since you're only really worried about covering two options from Snake, you can condition them pretty well. Some of the ways to condition neutral get ups are by standing at roll distance on short hopping, 
Lightning, using a full shuriken so that Snake has the time to get up around it, and tossing out Nair to bait an attack out of the corner. As for rolls, you can empty hop towards the ledge, slightly charge a shuriken, dash towards the ledge, or toss out a quick down tilt. Alright, that's a bunch of ways to condition Snake for the most part, but just because you condition him, it doesn't always mean that you want to punish him for it immediately. If you hold off a bit, you can go from getting a hard read forward smash at 20 for damage, to reading him at 70 for a kill. One of those sounds a little bit more appealing to me, so you decide. So let's say that you have the download and you know what option Snake's gonna use. I mean, it's a 50-50, right? Let's look into some hard punishes to close out stocks early. The most important part of going for a hard punish is having the timing down and not revealing your hand until it's time to do so. I know that charging a forward smash for the full duration of the move and hitting a neutral get up sounds amazing, but trust me, that's almost never gonna happen in an actual match. You wanna be as unpredictable as possible in this situation. This means committing to the punish just as your opponent commits to the option. If you get that down, your lush trap game is gonna go way up. So starting with the ways to cover neutral get up. I'm sure that you guys know this already, but ideally, you're gonna wanna use forward smash if you get the hard read. Forward smash's hitbox lasts for three frames, just like four tilts does. So if you have the timing down, you can cover that one frame vulnerability on neutral get up for a stock. Also recognize that this is your chance to charge a forward smash. With how strong Greninja's forward smash is, this can make the difference between killing snake at 90 and killing snake at 60. But also, acknowledge that there is such a thing as overkill. If Snake's in the hundreds, forward smash is at the point of killing center stage uncharged. So instead, go for a down smash. Not only will this still kill Snake on neutral get up, but in case he chooses to roll behind you, now you can cover that option as well. The one option that I really want to drive home to you guys for covering neutral get up though, is dash attack. I feel like I keep on repeating myself over and over in this video, but dash attack lingers for 5 frames. This makes it one of Greninja's most consistent moves for punishing neutral get up. As we mentioned in the juggling section, you get so much more frame advantage off of the later hitboxes, making dash attack forward air super consistent. So if you condition a neutral get up at mid to high percents, this is a very strong way to net some kills. You guys might have noticed a pattern in that we usually opt for lingering hitboxes to cover neutral get up, and there's a reason for that. Neutral get up at the shield is just an incredibly strong option, and it only having a one frame punish window means that timing something like a down tilt forward air can result in you missing out on the interaction. That's not to say that down tilt doesn't cover neutral get up though, because it definitely does. You're just trading a less committal option for potentially having to resort to corner pressure. And the way I see it, if you already have the read, you might as well commit to the option that rewards you the most for having that read. Having a lingering hitbox to help you out is just so, so helpful. So, uh, if there's a log there, you know what to do. There's one final way to cash this neutral get out, which I will mention, but it's a lot riskier than dash attack. You know this up tilt drag down combo? Well, it actually works pretty well against neutral get up. Greninja's up tilt actually lingers for four frames, so you can use its hitbox to cover neutral get up pretty consistently. And from here, you can kill Snake at 60 off of this. The only thing is that Greninja's up tilt is kinda slow to set up, and you need to be right at the ledge for this to work. This move doesn't come out until frame 9, and doing it out of a dash adds an extra 14 frames on top of that. Press F for perfect pivoting. When it comes to dealing with ledge roll, this is way easier to capitalize on. Looking at the frames on Snake's roll, he's left vulnerable about halfway through the move, and that's a 20 frame window where you're able to hit him out of the animation. This means that we can hit him with more than two attacks. Yay! If you see this roll coming, honestly feel free to punish it however you'd like. That 20 frame window is super generous. Something to keep in mind though is your positioning whenever you go for the punish. If you're conditioning roll by dashing towards the ledge, you're going to be a little more limited in how you're able to follow up. Ideally, you'll want to punish Snake with a forward smash, but try to consider that forward smash kills way early going this way rather than this way. If Snake is at down tilt up smash percent, this is way easier to connect on ledge roll compared to neutral get up and it still kills if you're dashing in from the ledge. If Snake isn't quite at the percent range for down tilt up smash to work, you'll want to keep the combo short and sweet. Getting something started off of dash attack or nair is great for this. At higher percents where down tilt up smash stops working, down tilt forward air is an option, but you'll be sending Snake across the stage making this potentially not kill until super high percents. On top of that, Snake will be pretty high up in the air, meaning that now you'll have to focus on pressuring his landing instead of edge guarding. If you want my recommendation, back throw is super solid here. This goes back to the whole backward cipher section, but back throw sets up really well for those edge guards. If Snake wants to be reverse, he has to toss nade which gives you a window to follow up. And if he doesn't be reverse, he backward cyphers the ledge giving you a free down smash. It's definitely an option to be aware of in case you're not quite sure that down tilt forward air 
will co frame across the stage. As good as conditioning is though, remember that reactionary LUD trapping is a thing. While getting those forward tilts, pivot grabs, and backers can help to cover multiple options, this is all just one part of closing out a stop. By using all of the tools in Gren's kit and knowing what's possible, you can go from just resetting the situation into guaranteeing a stop. If you can find your dash attack into forward air kill at 60, do it. If you can find your down tilt into up smash kill at 100, do it. A lot of what I just went over is a basic flow chart for LUD trapping, but being ready to react and call out the opponent's option accordingly will get you so much more mileage than throwing them off stage 10 times in a row. One final thing that I did want to talk about is combos against Snake. Every once in a while, you'll set up for a perfect combo, and the next thing you know, you either get blown up as a grenade goes off, or your combo ends in a nade toss that only does 2 damage. Being aware of grenade's positioning and advantage is so, so important. This goes back to the whole 40% of the fuse timer going off after throwing Snake thing, but hitting Snake towards the grenade can really open up how you're able to combo him. Again, landing a nade is pretty much the same thing as landing an air, but with like 3 times as much hit stun. And if you're just aware of where nade is on stage, you can use that. As tempting as it might be to follow through with your combo routes the way you normally do, nade improv is a thing, and if you start to think of it as a tool rather than an inconvenience, you're really going to start to capitalize on snake. As for nade pickup, this is a little more annoying, but it's definitely still usable. Whenever you pick up an item, there's both an audio cue and a flash animation that plays, telling you that there's now an item in your hand. And don't we love to listen to that when Snake is Z-nading? If you're putting Snake into hit stun as you pick up the nade, that's way more than enough time to react to the fact that it's now in your hand. All you have to do is be aware of this and mix up your punish. Z-dropping is great for this, since now nade is able to control this entire space around Snake while letting you apply even more pressure because of the frame 1 explosion hitbox. Being aware just goes so far for you in this matchup, bro. Also on the topic of combos, let me sprinkle in this kind of embarrassing, kind of don't be me bit of knowledge. As hype as you might think that they are, be very, very careful when going for jab locks against Snake. Remember Snake's up tilt? This thing will haunt your dreams, bro. You don't know how many times I've gotten a really nice drag down going, and the next thing you know, I'm dead to attack and play sub tilt because I went for a jab lock. This is an incredibly common option for Snake to do, even if you're not at a high percent. So personally, I just go for the dash attack or dash up down tilt. You don't get as much of a reward compared to a jab lock, but I don't know. Not dying seems like a pretty good trade off to me. And on that somewhat sour note, we finally made it through the advantage section. Fuck. We haven't talked about down air yet, have we? Okay, this is something that really needs addressing because the amount that you're able to get off of this move is insane. Snake is one of two characters that aerial footstool down air is true against. And if you land one down air on Snake, it's not all that far fetched to say that you can get eight more. Down air combos into footstool, and footstool combos into down air, and down air combos into forward air. You can use this to ladder Snake into the top blast zone, or at the very least, get a ton of damage off of down airs. There are a bunch of ways to lead into this down air loop, but I generally do believe that getting a raw down air into footstool is your best bet. Anything you can find that leads into down air is going to be getting you a lot of reward at mid percents. Tech chases, mix ups on shield, air dodge reads, and landing options are all viable ways to set this up. Especially mix ups on shields. I don't know why people are neglecting tomahawk down air nowadays, but bro, this gets you so much. Whenever you go for this footstool down air, Snake can choose to either DI in front of you or behind you to throw off the combo. A lot of people tend to see this as a 50 50 of guessing either left or right. But remember the blue DI line. There's enough hit lag on down air for you to react to the blue DI line and get ready to follow up with a footstool in that direction. That's not to say that a raw down air is your only way of setting this up though. We've covered some really awkward hitboxes and launch angles today, and a lot of those happen to set up into a footstool down air. How they throw combos, nade releases, and lingering dash attacks can all lead into down air loops. Snake is one of those characters that you have so much creative liberty against, so stay on your toes in case you recognize one of those weird interactions. Because, yeah, I've definitely made more than a few people mad from how much I've lived this matchup. Are you fucking kidding me? Do you do nothing but play this game? Because it seems like it. You form for clips and do shit like that. Tone the ego down a bit. Man playing like you've got nothing to live for. It's sad, honestly. Use this ghost for something else. Maybe then you would have more to offer the world than clips nobody cares about or is going to look at. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for my breakdown of Advantage versus Snake. A lot of people tend to think that Greninja doesn't have the best advantage on this guy, but I don't know. Hopefully this close to an hour segment can help to convince them otherwise. So on to disadvantage, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> At the beginning of the video, I said that I spent the past six months grinding out this matchup. That was back in March. It is currently fucking December 20th, 2022. As much as I'd like to make this video into a snake matchup bible, I think I've earned a bit of a break, guys. Spending 12 months on this guide by myself has really taken a toll on me, so I'm gonna take a bit of time off before I continue with it. This has undoubtedly been the largest project that I've ever worked on, and the amount of space left on my hard drive really goes to prove it. I'll definitely be back to tackle the rest of this guide, but for now, I am just done, bro. 
Fortunately though, I haven't been working on this guy completely on my own. I've been in touch with some very talented individuals and I want to take the opportunity to thank them directly rather than just plugging their names in the description. You might have noticed that I've used a ton of footage from my own games and that's only possible because of the snake discord. Call me Tarek because I've been playing lame and camping the absolute crap out of this matchmaking channel to run friendlies and get footage. At this point, I've no joke got like a hundred plus hours of footage in the matchup. Some of the guys that I've played with are actually homies though and I'm so glad that that I've been able to meet them. Players like Saga, Archimedes, Zekinator, Chaotix, and so many others have gone a long way in helping me make this guide possible. So a genuine, massive thank you to all of the Snake Discord. But also, I need to plug Pop and Swiss bro. This guy has been playing Snake since Brawl days, and the amount of knowledge he has on the character really goes to prove it. I have watched so many of his tutorials, and without them, I don't think I'd be nearly as knowledgeable on the matchup as I am now. I'm plugging his channel down below, so please go ahead and check him out. Especially since we might be doing a first attempt in the near future. After Swiss, we've got Adam. This guy's been one of my best friends for the past 10 years, and you don't know how much he does behind the scenes to make these videos possible. I have recordings that are hours upon hours long of us just going down the shopping list of footage that I need for my videos. Like, the guy doesn't even play Snake, but still, he's always down to hop into an arena and help me get footage of those obscure interactions that I need. So I'm incredibly thankful to have him helping me as well. He also does stream on Twitch, so make sure to check him out. On the content creation front, we've got two names that you might have heard of before, J for Jonas and Spitz. These guys are two incredibly, incredibly talented Smash content creators who make absolutely beautiful videos. I really wanted to make this video look as polished as possible, and they've gone a long way in helping me achieve that. From learning about feathering, masking, and cropping out character models to make thumbnails pop, these two really helped out the production quality of this video. Huge thank you, go check them out. Also, also, as I said in the beginning, I am not a competitor, but thankfully, I know a few people that are. So going down the list of Greninja players that have helped make this video possible. We've got Anarchy, who actually inspired me to start making write-ups on matchups. Cyanide, one of the best Greninja players in Texas. Ice Knight, who's been on an absolute tear recently. Ice Studying, who is my inspiration for picking up Greninja way back in Smash 4. Jay Grunt, who can't seem to get out of Elite Smash Hell despite working on his CPA license. Kike, who's had this matchup down since release. MFD, the best player in main. Ninja Link, who has way too much knowledge of the game. Professor MG W, who's just the definition of a homie. Tarek, who's come way out from Germany to really put Greninja back on the radar. And the king himself, Venia. Oh man, being able to work with some of these people has generally been such an honor. I remember looking up to so many of these guys back in Smash 4 and just being amazed by how knowledgeable they are with their character. So being able to teach even them new things about the matchup is honestly just insane to me. So a massive, massive thank you to all of them. And finally, thank you. Yes, you watching the video or movie. Maybe the snake matchup has rubbed off on me because I've been cooking this shit for over a year now. So thank you for putting up with my absence for this long. I know 2022 wasn't the most eventful year on the Apple Ocean channel, but I really, really hope that I was able to deliver with this guy. I'm actually super down to tackle more matchups in the future, but I'm probably gonna stray away from these more complicated ones so that I can at the very least have somewhat consistent uploads. So next up, we're talking about Steve. No, I'm just kidding. Let's not spend eight years on that video. But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for part one of the Anti-Snake Guide. Thank you all so, so much for watching my first ever movie. Don't expect another one anytime soon. I hope you all had a great 2022 and here's to an even better 2023. But as we transition from one year to the next, it's always good to look back and remember one very, very important thing. Hold in. Well, unless you're in disadvantage against Snake. <laughs>